Hey guys, last week I showed you how to demodulate a DVBS signal using SDR Angel and an RTL SDR within Windows. Today I'll be teaching you how to transmit that signal using the DATV Express software, which supports the Lime, Lime Mini, and Pluto SDRs, as well as the DATV Exciter Board. My name's Corrosive. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Signals Everywhere. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. We're going to go ahead and dive right into DATV Express. Uh, today I'm using the Lime SDR Mini as my transmitter, but it does work with all the aforementioned uh, SDRs and uh, hardware transmitters as well. First thing we can do before we can transmit is we need to set up our modulator. We're going to do that by clicking on modulator and coming down to common. And you're going to see a few important things here is your transmit frequency in hertz, your symbol rate, your transmit level, and transmit mode, as well as which SDR you are using. So because we've been focusing on the DVBS demodulator, we're going to transmit in DVBS mode. But you also have S2 and DVBT as options if you choose to use those. Your transmit level can actually be set using the slider in real time while transmitting, so I don't bother with that here. Your symbol rate is very important. This is going to heavily, um, heavily influence what um, bandwidth your signal uses. So at 700 kilosymbols or 700,000 uh, as your symbol rate, you're going to be using up just about 1 megahertz of bandwidth. Uh, you can go up or down with this, but that's roughly where you're going to be at 700 kilosymbols. Uh, and again, your frequency is going to be in hertz. So this is actually 427.25 megahertz. And you can use a Google calculator if you're not familiar with that conversion. So we're just going to hit OK. And now that we've selected our modulator, we can come down here. You'll see the only one that is available to click on is DVBS because that is the mode we are in. And this is where you set up your forward error correction. This will also influence um, the bandwidth of your signal. I find that 7 eighths works pretty well for me, but you can play around with it. A lot of people use 1 half or 2 third. Um, it really is going to be a case by case basis, but 7 eighths work pretty well for me, so I'll leave it there. Next we go to our options. We're not going to worry about IQ calibration or the noise tool, but we can look at our on-air format. And this is uh, basically, do we want to use the input format from our uh, video camera, or do we want to change that? So do we want to upscale or downscale the video? Do we want to change the aspect ratio to 1 to 1, 4 to 3, or 16 to 9? Gives you those options. Uh, 4 by 3 is the traditional square uh, video that you may be used to, or 16 to 9 that you see today with high definition broadcast. We're just going to leave it at 4 by 3 and the input format. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Next, we go over to SI tables. If you're an amateur radio operator and you intend to use this for transmitting a uh, DVBS signal for amateur use, you're going to want to pay special attention here because your provider name is the name that gets overlaid on top of your video. So this is where you want to put your call sign. In my case, WB5OD is my club call. I place that in my provider name. Now you also get service name, event title, and event text, as well as a duration. Uh, these are what's going to show up in your EPG or your program guide. Um, the DVBS demodulator does show that in software, but if, let's say, you're transmitting at 1.2 gigahertz going directly to a uh, satellite receiver with the LNB bypass, um, this would show up in that program guide as well. And if you'd like, there is a link in the description um, showing um, myself actually doing that very thing if you're interested. You also see we can set our video and audio PID, uh, network ID, service ID. Uh, these are arbitrary numbers that in our case, it doesn't really matter what we set them to. It's not going to make um, any noticeable impact on your transmission. I leave those as default. <clears throat> From here, we can set up our audio and video codecs. These are usually pretty good defaulted. I don't change the GOP, the B frame, or the video bitrate twiddle. What you may want to look at here is your actual video codec, though. I like to use H.262 for backwards compatibility reasons. It works well in software. It works well in hardware decoders. Uh, H.264 and 265 may be higher quality, but you need to kind of understand that they, that may also affect the bandwidth of your signal as well. And if you're an amateur radio operator, you know that bandwidth is a very valuable resource, and we want to try and keep that signal narrow uh, whenever possible. So H.262 I like to use. Uh, it tends to work the best in the long run for me. Uh, we also need to set the codec for our audio. Uh, we're going to use MPEG-1 Layer 2. AAC is not currently available. Uh, you can enable or disable the audio if you want to transmit without audio. 
and you get the options of 32k mono which is basically just using one speaker or the 64 to 192k stereo options again the higher the bitrate of your audio the wider the bandwidth of your signal uh, with the audio it's not going to make a huge difference but know that it does make a difference in that bandwidth um, 64k stereo seems to be good enough for me and finally before we transmit you have your capture device where is the content coming from so we're going to do video. I'm using the integrated camera that comes with my laptop. And then you get the device's formats. I have never had any luck transmitting with the YUY2 format. I highly suggest if you have that MJPEG or Motion JPEG available, that is the format I recommend you use. Um, or if you're using something like FFmpeg, use that Motion JPEG format. I think that's going to work the best for you. Uh, I did decide to interlace this, however, it doesn't seem to make a big impact on bandwidth or anything else. That is purely up to you. And then your audio. And this is just the device we're going to pull audio from, in this case the microphone. Pretty simple. We'll leave that as is, press OK, and now we're actually able to transmit. So a couple quick things, you have video ident, that's whether or not that call sign um, or provider name gets overlaid. If you're an amateur radio operator, you need to have that um, ticked so that way your call sign is overlaid. Carrier only um, basically transmits with no video. We don't really want that. And TS Record will record your video to file during that transmission. Without further ado, we're going to press Transmit or PTT. You'll see its uh, system is configurating and to wait for that window to close. Basically, anytime you make a change to the software settings, the first time you hit PTT, it needs to reconfigure, after which we press it again and it will begin to transmit. So we'll hit PTT. You'll see I have my signal down here in our demodulator. And let's see, we're using QPSK, 7 8 We're allowing drift. Looks all good in the demodulator. Uh, but it does appear that our signal is not um, over our four dots like it was in our DMOD video. So what we may need to do is adjust our transmit level. We're either too strong or not strong enough. There we go. You don't want to overpower or underpower the signal going to your receiver. So I'm just going to kind of adjust that level here. And I had it for a moment. Let's untick allow drift. There we go. And now you can see this buffer's filling. We've got good speed. This means our receiver is pulling in our video signal. Um, you're going to notice on our transmit side this Q. You never want this Q to reach 100%. If it does, you basically have video coming in faster than you're able to push that out the transmit side of your transceiver or your SDR. Keep that level right around 20% if you can. If you go past that, you're going to end up with video that freezes or just doesn't transmit. If I go to my video tab and press play, you'll see that the video is indeed playing. So you do have video. Here is our overlay on the screen. There's that PID I told you about. And now you'll notice it doesn't have the EPG information, and that is really um, an issue with the software to modulator. Um, depending on how tight the signal is, that information may get lost, but the important stuff like your call sign should always stay on the screen uh, and shouldn't be a big um, factor of concern here. So with that being said, uh, we're essentially all set. Uh, if you followed all the steps, you should be transmitting a good um, DVB-S signal. Now, of course, if you're an amateur operator and you're using an SDR for this, you're going to want to put a filter on your front end before it goes to the antenna. You may want an amplifier. Uh, these are things I'll be doing in future videos. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the description below. If you like this video, please, please press like and subscribe. Um, in the future, we're going to be doing a transmit video using an, um, a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to show you some other options as well as at some point I want to show you how to do this with a Hack RF. Uh, because that is not currently supported by the DATV Express software. So again, I appreciate every one of you for watching the video. Uh, like and subscribe. We will see you all in the next one.